Welcome everyone to the Moldex 3D 2023 Quick Start Tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to go over how to set up a model in Moldex 3D and what parameterization and procedures are needed to get started in using Moldex 3D quickly. We have two applications, CAD Doctor and Studio. CAD Doctor is going to help us to fix models that, that are coming in from our CAD system, and Studio is going to be used for pretty much everything else from importing our model, setting up the simulation, running the simulation and interpreting the results. Jumping into CAD Doctor. In CAD Doctor, we're gonna be following a five-step procedure, starting off with import. Import allows us to import a geometry using a variety of different import styles. You can see all those import styles here. Step files are the most common and most universal. So we'll start off by importing our step file into moldx 3 d CAD Doctor. We're then going to go down a little bit on the left side of our interface. We're going to click the check button, which looks like a box with magnifying glass. This will identify any potential issues with our geometry coming from our CAD system, which includes service misalignment, small surfaces, and services that might just cause an issue when trying to transform this geometry into a series of mesh elements. The button to the right of check is auto stitch, which will help us with the loop of free edges error. Loop of free edges will happen when two surfaces are disconnected from one another or if a surface is missing completely. In the first scenario where two surfaces are closed but disconnected, the auto stitch tool will help us to merge those together. In this case, we don't have any loop of free edges, so we can skip over it. To the right of that is auto heal. Auto heal is going to help us to fix everything besides loop of free edges. And then it's going to run through and check again to see if there's any remaining issues afterwards. Importantly, the auto heal function will not change the geometry. If a service needs to be deleted and reconstructed, the auto heal tool will not perform that action and instead will leave that as a series of errors that you'll have to fix manually. If you need to fix a category manually, you can highlight and there will be a series of repair tools down here towards the bottom. Minor errors, which are typically what are left over after this auto healing process, we don't have to worry about too much. The last button that we're going to click in CAD Doctor is the export button. Next to the import button, the export button allows us to export the model for importing into Moldex 3D. And the export style is going to be MDXSF, that's the extension that we use. It's effectively just a Moldex 3D solid file that is importable only into Moldex 3D applications. I'll save this file to my desktop so that it's easier to access when we open up Moldex 3D Studio. When you go to close out of CAD Doctor, you might get a message that asks you if you want to save the file. Note that this is going to save an application file for CAD Doctor and it's not actually going to overwrite the original step file. Moving forward into Moldex 3D, this is where we're going to spend the rest of our time. When we open up Moldex 3D Studio, we're going to be faced with two options up at the top left corner. We can create a new project or open an existing one. In this case, I'm going to create a new project, and there will be two items that are identified here. You have the project name and the project location. The project name will always have the designation of MDX project followed by the date. I'm going to change this to be something more meaningful. And the location is going to be either where you last saved the project or the default location that was created when you installed Moldex 3D. This is typically going to be the working folder that you established, and you can create your project there. Along the top side of the interface, we see the ribbon. We're going to follow this ribbon from left to right. Starting off with new run, Moldex 3D has created the first run for us automatically, so we don't necessarily have to do anything in this dropdown. But this allows you to either create a new run, copy an existing run, import a run from a different project, and a couple of other options that allow you to create runs automatically. The DOE wizard specifically allows you to create a large series of runs and optimize the input parameters. Moving on to Moldex 3D solution, we have a series of molding types that allow you to access advanced processing methods. You can see that list here, but for this tutorial, we're just going to be using the injection molding module. Besides that, we are going to be selecting which meshing type we're going to use. For 99.5% of the simulations that you run in Moldex 3D, you're going to be using the solid meshing type. We do have a more automated meshing type eDesign that allows you to create mesh when it's not possible to create a mesh using solid. To the right of that is import geometry, where we're going to find the MDXSF file that we saved out from CAD Doctor. You can also import your CAD directly. 
We don't recommend you to do that just because fixing your model in CAD Doctor will alleviate a lot of the problems that you might get otherwise if the CAD geometry is not a high enough quality. When you import a model into Moldex 3D, you're going to be transitioned automatically from the Home tab to the Model tab. And the first button that you see all the way at the left of the Model tab is Import Geometry, where you can continue to import more models, things like the runner system, the cooling system, inserts, even the entire mold assembly, to make your modeling as complex as you need it to be. In this case, we're just going to leave off with just the part, and move on to the right, which is Check Geometry. Check Geometry allows us to check for three things. We have free edges, tiny edges, and sharp face angles. Free edges are going to be synonymous with what we saw in CAD Doctor as the loop of free edges. If we had no loop of free edges in CAD Doctor, then we won't have any free edges here. Tiny edges, as the name might suggest, are just very small features on our part. If I rotate around, we can see that this feature specifically is a very small one. These tiny edges can cause a mesh disparity issue, which can start to impact the precision of the results of the simulation. We recommend to get rid of as many of these as possible, but if you have a couple left over from CAD Doctor, it's not the end of the world. Sharp face angle, as the name might suggest, is just two surfaces coming together at a very sharp edge. This can be an issue because it's very difficult to fill solid mesh into a small volume like that. In most situations, it's okay. You don't need to fix this manually or anything but it's good to be aware of where this sharp face angle lies. Moving to the right of check geometry, we have attribute. Attribute allows us to tell Mold x 3 d what this object is supposed to do in the simulation. If you left click on the geometry, it will select it. And you can see that the default attribution of any object coming into Mold x 3 d is none. If you click on the dropdown, you'll see all the different attributions that are available. We'll assign the attribute of part to this geometry as it's what's intended to be made by the injection molding process. Once we have assigned the attribution of part, we can identify the model thickness. The model thickness distribution allows us to see where the thick regions of our part are, and allows us to get a little bit more familiar with the geometry that we might not have inspected before coming into Mold x 3 d You can get rid of the thickness distribution by going back to the project tree, and you can click on model. You can just toggle between those two. Now that we've defined our part in the simulation project, we can create a gate you can see all the different gating options that we have under the dropdown. I'm going to use add pin gate here. You can just hover over the surface that you want to gate on, left click, and it will create a simple pin gate for you, normal to the surface that you clicked on. The gate parameter indicates the size of the gate and directly references the bottom diameter. If I decrease this number, we can see that it live updates. The shape of the gate stays the same, but the size changes. I'll leave the default and press the green check mark to finish out that gate function. For a multi-cavity system or a multi-gate single cavity system, you can use the runner function to create a generic runner for you, and you can modify that however you like. In this case, we're just going to keep it simple and just use a gate. If I just want to see filling and packing, this is all I need. I just need the part and the gate and a melt entrance, which is this red arrow on the top. If you don't have this red arrow on the top, then you'll need to click the melt entrance to create the definition for where the flow calculation is supposed to start. If I want to see the warpage of my final geometry, I need to create some sort of cooling system. If we don't, we have to assume that the surface temperature is uniform and that the heat is escaping ideally out to its surroundings. This is going to create a much lower warpage number than we would expect, or than what would happen in reality, and that's a situation that we want to avoid. Creating some sort of cooling system allows us to see the temperature distribution throughout the mold and allows us to create a more realistic heat transfer scenario. To start off, we're going to create a mold base. The mold base is just going to be a box. We want to make sure that the box is oriented properly. You can adjust that using the parting direction, which will be the die opening direction. You can see that you use the X, Y, and Z axes as your parting direction definitions. You can adjust the length, width, and if you click on the blue arrow up at the top, you can access the height dimension to adjust your mold base dimensions accordingly. You can press the green check mark once the dimensions are satisfactory, and this creates the medium through which heat can transfer. Although we're not done yet, we need some place for the heat to go, and that's going to be our cooling channel system. If you don't have a cooling system set yet, we can create a dummy cooling channel system by just using the cooling channel wizard up here. The parameters allow us to adjust which direction these channels are facing, the diameter of these channels, the number of channels on the top and bottom, 
how far these channels are spaced from one another, and the height from the surface of the part. I usually use the height as 10 times the diameter. Once you're satisfied with your cooling channels, you can go ahead and press the green check mark. And then we're going to run a final check to make sure that everything is satisfactory with our system. If everything is satisfactory, you'll get a message at the bottom left corner of your screen saying check cooling system OK. And that's an indication that we're ready to move on to the next stage, which is meshing our model. So we'll move on to the mesh tab. You can see that the solid meshing style is already selected for us. You can create a customized seating if you'd like, although the default seating in MoldX3D is typically satisfactory. We're going to hit Generate. We can see the procedure or the sequence that Mold X-ray is going to use to mesh all of our geometry. You can hit Generate. Once the mesh is finished, you can hit Final Check. That will save our mesh and send us over into the rest of our simulation preparation. Once it says the mesh is ready for analysis, we press OK, and that sends us back to the Home tab where we can continue on from where we left off, which was originally Import Geometry. BC allows us to set up some boundary conditions such as venting and stress boundary conditions, as well as heat transfer boundary conditions. Moving on to the right of that, we have our material selection. You can either select a recently used material, or you can go into the material wizard, which has been recently updated to a more modern interface style. You can search through the database by hitting the, the search button here, which allows you to use a series of various material properties to find the material that you're looking for. You can also search through the material database, which is organized by polymer type, then by manufacturer, and then by the grade name. To add a material into your project, you're gonna right click and add to project. You can also add it to your user bank if you'd like to access that material later on. You can see that the material is in the project tab now. And when you close out of the material wizard, you can see that that material is loaded automatically into your simulation run. moldx 3 d will create a default process for you. You can change that default process if you'd like, or you can trust the default if it's a preliminary simulation. Under the analysis dropdown, we have three different types of simulations that are typically run. Filling analysis allows you to see the flow of plastic through your mold. Filling and packing, in addition to seeing the filling of the plastic through the mold, also allows you to see the packing effect from your gate location. And then the transient analysis simulation sequence allows you to not only see the filling and packing effects, but also allows you to see the cooling distribution and your effectiveness of your cooling system, as well as the final warped geometry. This is our hallmark warpage analysis. The computation parameters are great by default, and we can move on to running the simulation. There's two ways to do it. You can either just run it right away. If you hit Computing Manager, that allows you to edit the task number before launching the simulation. The task number is how many cores the simulation is going to utilize to run the simulation. And then you'll hit Submit to launch the run. Once the simulation is completed, you'll see that the results are automatically downloaded into your project and will appear under the Results section of your project tree. In this case, we see Fill, Pack, Cool, and Warp because I ran the Transient Analysis study. Going under the Filling Results, the first result that we see here is Melt Front Time. I can go to the Result tab and press the Play button under Animation to see the progression of flow throughout my geometry. We can go to a specific percentage by just entering that percentage here. Or we can drag the animation along if we want to see where the flow gets to a particular feature. You can hit the stop to get out of the animation. And you can see that there's a plethora of different result interpretation tools at your disposal. We do have a couple of other videos up on our YouTube channel, and I'll post those here, so that you can go and investigate all of the different features and interpretation tools that we have available at your disposal. If you do have any questions, you can feel free to leave a comment, and please leave a like if you'd like to see content like this in the future, as well as other tutorials on advanced features, and we'll see you in the next moldx 3 d video, or if you'd like to keep up to date with all of our events, you can follow our LinkedIn page at moldx 3 d Northern America, Inc. Otherwise, we thank you for watching, and go beyond simulation with moldx 3 d